now, 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 so I'm coming this here, everything done changed. The change. That warp tool made you open your brain. Open your brain. Eric Vanek is here, so remember the name. Remember the name. Hey, hey. He got the waiver wire for the week. Tell you who to start and who to give a seat. Dropping the podcast every week. You know the knowledge is elite. After the show, we gon' hold a Lombardi. I'm celebrating like we throwing a party. This the blueprint that I know they gon' copy. Cause this is America's game What's good, everybody? Welcome to episode number 12 of America's Game. I'm your host, Eric Vanek, and you can find me on Twitter at Eric Vanek NFL. Uh, you can find the show at America's Game Pod as well. And the man to uh, my left here, the man who created that uh, intro video for us, Adam. What's going on, Adam? What's going on, man? Hey, it was easy. You know, I had the, uh, the mastermind just telling me what to put where. So just implementation at that point, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I mean that video came out uh freaking sick, man. You and uh you killed it on the uh graphics and everything and Fizzle killed it on the intro, man. Love it. Yeah, man, absolutely. F- Fizzle when Fizzle sent me the song, I was like, Oh shit. Like Eric doesn't even know about this song. <laughs> He's kinda giving me the, you know, what what he wants the, the the video to look like and I'm like, Man, with this song we'll we'll, we'll make this thing really really fire. So put a lot of time into it, yeah. but we're, we're we're I'm excited with the the output of it, man. Hell yeah, me too. And uh, one thing I'm not excited about, though, is the uh, buy apocalypse is here. Are you excited about that? I mean, <laughs> the only the only thing that excites me about it is um, there are teams that have not prepped for it far more yeah. than I have. Like, I, I've i known that it, they're coming. The buy, buy apocalypse is fucking coming, and buys always suck, especially with the injuries that go with it. But – yeah. The only thing that's that is a little exciting is I know there's some teams out there that are just gutted, didn't plan for it, and maybe I can now siphon something off their team. But by and large, I'd say hell no, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, no, me either. Have you tried to like set in any of your like lineup leagues yet this week? <clears throat> uh, I I always try to like actually ahead of time just kind of make sure because I do it now a little ahead of time, just like the the template of it almost, right? So I set it. Ahead of time, now I know there might be someone in my lineup with an injury that I don't, I don't know if he's going to go yet. But the reason I do that is the last thing I want to do is do start sit with you on Sunday, and overlook overlook where I have somebody on by already slotted in. Like I want those dudes out every week, so I have started to do that in a lot of my leagues. And I'm trying to remember, there was one league man where like, I Tank Dell's definitely starting for me. And I have a, a flex that I'm. Well, we'll see what's going to happen. It's kind of gross. So start thirteen, yeah. but I'm like, well, Holy shit. I would hope you don't have Tank Dell starting. He's kind of on a buy this week. There. <clears> well, <throat> that's a good point too. He's on a buy. <laughs> what's a Tank Dell? I took Tank Dell out of my lineup. I'm trying to figure oh, out who the hell it was. So somebody that shouldn't normally start is starting. Now I got to pull it up. But um, <laughs> there is uh, Tank Dell is actually normally in my lineup. I had to take him out, so it's it's bad. Yeah. But, well, uh, Tank didn't play last week either, so uh, because of that out? concussion. Who did I pull out then? Yeah, I don't know why I got Tank Dell in my mind, but um, okay. Start thirteen. I'll yeah. pull up the, I'm gonna pull up the league right now, actually. So uh, how I normally do it is when I do my waivers on Tuesday evenings, um, I'll go ahead do the waivers first, and then I'll set my lineup after that. Mm-hmm. And man, doing it this week, there were some teams where I'm like, woof, I am. Uh, who, who's the worst bit. one that you can remember starting right now or, or currently slated to start? Player-wise? Oh, yeah. Um, or in the range, just guys you remember. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to go and, and, like, look, but, like, you know, you're getting, like, the Darius Slayton territory where he hasn't, like, really done shit this year, but he is at least out there for 80% of the snaps and you're just hoping for something. Yeah. That's probably one of my worst ones is, like, a Darius Slayton type, probably. Okay. Got it. That's not, I mean, it's 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 pretty gross. It's not like the worst thing in the world. Uh, right. I'm sorry, it was Jalen Hyatt. So even worse than Tank. Okay, though. I had to, I had to play some Hyatt this week, and he his numbers went up. So I don't hate it. Yeah, like, I mean, I like, I like him and Wandale a little bit this week, honestly. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't really like anybody in this Giants offense outside of like maybe Barkley, truthfully. Waller's been coming along a little bit, but yeah, I knew it was somebody gross. I don't know why. I, I mean, that's why that they uh, have Tyrod. High. Like, Tyrod is a guy who <clears throat> doesn't turn the ball over. He is pretty competent. Like, it's not like he's going to go out there and throw you 330 and three touchdowns, but he can get you – 225 and, and maybe a touchdown or two rush for some yards. He's not going to turn the ball over. So like, he's like the perfect backup quarterback. So this is the spot for Tyrod. I and mean, hell, they almost pulled the off, uh, upset off. Yeah, they Buffalo. did in Buffalo this week. <clears throat> that would have yeah. been crazy. And Speaking I, of- I honestly, if I had to pick, I'd, I'd pick them to win this week against Washington at home. I, I think, I think it'll be a very good game. Those division games always tend to be, mm-hmm. well, they can go any which way, but, um, I mean, to see Tyrod and them win would definitely not be surprising. I'd probably project it too. The um, speaking of uh, crazy games last week, I'm rocking the Browns. We got, I mean, PJ Walker sure. stepping in and getting a dub versus the Niners. You know, I feel like it was the the pregame uh, scrap got got yeah. the Browns in the mindset. You know, you want to mess with the elves, man? Come on, What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I think that was probably a benefactor to that for sure. Because I, I'll be fully honest. I think I started Jerome Ford in one league, and it was a point per carry league where you'd start like thirteen. That's the only Brown I played all. Week. I was gonna say I, was I, I heard there was some faux pas with uh, the whole start sit and the Mari Cooper. I I heard about it and I watched him high point that football, and I'm like, oh man, like yeah. Eric probably isn't loving this right now. Like he's loving the Browns winning, but is probably not loving all the sits of uh, Mari Cooper. Yeah, happens, I mean, I only have a couple of Maris, but okay. yeah, I did sit him. Man, it sucked to have him on my bench, but at least he didn't go like nuke. He didn't go crazy, know? but he had a he had over 100 yards. You know, I, I have a yeah. couple of these where you get the, the extra little bonus for over 100 yards too. Um, yeah, but yeah, man, uh, the the bipocalypse is not fun, right? And no, no. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know why the tank though I have on mine. Jalen Hyatt, I have to I have to fucking play Jalen Hyatt. I, I was looking, by the way, in the game logs for for points, and it is mm-hmm. I hope it's gonna be better usage for the weeks I have him in. Um but anyway, yeah. with with all the buys coming up this week and with injuries, I'm kinda curious like where, where your head's at on this and um how how you're approaching it in some of your leagues. Oh, I mean, I you've been approaching it all year, basically. You've been having your depth. You've been keeping your depth. And as long as you have your depth, you should be fine. Like, it, this is what we prepare for. Like, this has been in the NFL now for however long. Like, we get – I don't know when they added, like, six teams on one bye. Yeah. But they did, which makes no sense because in week eight, nobody's on a bye. Yeah, so, like, I know. you couldn't have split this up. Like, these – I think there's, like, two different or three different 16 buys. Like, you couldn't have split this up and gave four teams off in week eight and took away two from each of the six-week buys. It makes no sense, but – Week, week eight is uh, is, ne- is the following week. So, I wonder – yeah, I wonder what what the what the reasoning where it was. Yeah, there's no buys next week, and then right. I think week nine is another six teamer buy. Hmm. So yeah, it makes no sense how they set this up, but it is what it is. We got to prepare for it, but yeah, I think as long as you have the depth and you've been building correctly all off season, you should be fine. Like yeah, the guys that you're going to put under your lineup, yeah, you might not normally, but you know, in a <clears> week where we're missing six teams. You know, I'll, I'll go through them here real quick. We're missing the Panthers. We're missing the Bengals, the Cowboys, Texans, Jets, and Titans. So, you know, you're missing, you know, some pretty good players there. So yeah, you're you going to have to uh, just, you know, reset a little bit and and hope for the best. I mean, you're going to have to start some guys that you normally don't start, but that's why we have our depth. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I, I, let me ask you this then. Do you have – have you picked anyone off the wire up that's going to go into your lineup in any leagues mm-hmm. or do you have, have you made any like little crafty moves, let's say to fill in a cheap position, a flex or a tight end or a running back or something like that for the week? Yeah. So in my redraft leagues, um, they haven't run the uh, FFPC waivers yet, but even some of my home leagues, I picked up Michael Mara this week. He's been getting more and more involved. He had his best career game last week. Yeah. Um, there's this week they're playing the Bears. The Bears suck. They do. I think he, either with if Jimmy G plays, which I don't think he is, and you know if Aiden goes out there, I think Aiden can do just fine with Michael Mayer. So it seems like it's going to be Aiden, right? 
I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. The only reason Aiden O'Connell did not go in last week is because he was inactive and Hoyer was the backup. Right. So I don't know why the Raiders do that. Um, they've pretty much have done that all year. Hoyer is always the backup and Aiden is inactive. But if you're going to start Aiden O'Connell when Jimmy was out, why wouldn't he be the backup? Like right. if, if Jimmy got hurt again, then Aiden would come in. But I don't know. They just like the veteran Hoyer, maybe because he's done it before. He's come in and replaced people before. He's used to it. He's yeah. done it before. Maybe that's the whole reasoning. I don't know. But for sure. Um, yeah, Aiden, Aiden should go in there this week. So I picked up Michael Mayer quite a bit in some leagues, and I'm starting him this week. Um, a couple weeks ago, actually um, – it might have been after his week one, I picked up Wandale Robinson in a couple leagues. And just for PPR leagues, I mean, he had eight for 62 last week. I'll take those 14 points on a bye week, you know. Absolutely, as long as, if, as long as I can get everybody in my lineup scoring 10 plus, I'm happy usually. Yeah, um, yeah. oh, dude, for sure. Uh, on these bye week, on these bye apocalypse weeks especially, man, if you get double digits out of everybody, that's a great, great Great job. The worst is when you pick up somebody and start them and they get you like three points. Like it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Right. I didn't actually like, play he, him anywhere, but I, um, I had a couple shares and luckily I had just like other kind of gross, any RBs on a 53 that I played ahead of him. And whoo. Oh, you know what? I did. No, I did play him in one league and, um, I, I still was, I still won cause that team's roster constructed appropriately, but man, mm-hmm. watching him get three touches is like, what are we doing? Right. And I think the one this week that's going to do it to people is Zach Evans for the Rams. Mm. Everyone's blowing their load on Zach Evans. But then the Raider or uh, the Rams went and spent or uh, signed three different players. It, they, brought, they brought you said they brought in Darrell Henderson back. Yeah, they brought Darrell Henderson back. They signed Miles Gaskin off the Vikings practice <clears throat> squad to their active roster now. So Miles Gaskin is on the active roster and mm-hmm. they brought up, they're going to elevate Royce Freeman from their own practice squad. So that's three players that they brought in. That just tells me they do not trust Zach Evans in a feature role right now. Yeah. He's probably going to, he'll probably get five, six, seven carries. He'll get a little bit of work, but Miles Gaskin's going to get worked in. Royce Freeman's going to get worked in. So if you're praying like, Oh man, Zach Evans is going to do exactly what Kyron <clears throat> Williams does for me. Uh-uh, not gonna happen. Not against the Steelers too. Steelers yeah. coming off of a bye, um, they're gonna be rested and hungry. I know. I know the game's in LA, but I think, uh, yeah, I think starting Zach Evans this week is definitely gonna be the one that people are like, "Oh man, why did I start him?" Because I don't, I don't see him doing very good. Yeah. No. Well, I think. See, it's funny, man. Um, you know, we, you and I have had our. Uh, Cam Akers back and forth. And I think he, he, here's the thing about Cam Akers and, and the McVay offense, right? For whatever reason, now we, we saw spurts of it, right? And we saw mm-hmm. actually in multiple seasons in the back half of the, of the year where he like took over this feature role, right? Three downs. But the reality is for most times, a big problem for McVay has been his lack of trusting in Cam Akers and pass pro. And if you remember going back to two years when they opened up versus Buffalo, I remember Cam Akers got absolutely destroyed in the hole picking up a block, and he just wasn't reliable in that. And I do not think at all McVay trusts Zach Evans in, like, pass pro. No. No. So, and yeah. the thing is, like, most people say, oh, well, that's like a third down. It's not really when you're McVay. He wants to have all his plays disguised as the same, right? So when he goes out there and he's got a guy that's basically not – trustworthy and pass pro to him he's probably not passing and that becomes a tell and he does not like that at all so you're probably right you're probably going to see very little usage out of zach evans relative to what people may be expecting um Mm -hmm. and it also man i'll tell you this injury to kyron kind of goes to show like having too much stock into any one of these running backs as the season carries on as these running backs whether they're stature of kyron williams or stature of derrick henry whoever they take abuse week in and week out, right? And mm-hmm. that tends to wear on those players over over time. So um, this is where you got to have, you know, have as many of these, especially in lineup leagues, have as many of these other running backs that don't have a job currently but are just one hit away. Right. And especially with um, Kyron. I don't mind, like, having a ton of Kyron like I do 
just because he was so cheap to have in the first place. People were dropping him in the off season <clears throat> so I could pick him up. So oh, yeah, like, I don't, I'm not saying not to have him. I'm just saying that right. ha- have plans in place for in- injuries to the running back. Besides. Right. Yeah. So I did sell a couple um, this season so far, just because he has been doing good. Uh, just to you know get some profit back on on those teams. But for the majority of them, I still have them. And like, yeah, it sucks. I'm going to be missing him for four weeks. It's going to hurt my lineups a little bit. But it wasn't like you know coming into the season, I was like counting on Kyron Williams to be in my lineup every single week. So he's just been a really uh, found, found profit so far for me. Oh yeah, for sure. He, he, he's been, I don't have as I don't have nearly as much exposure as I would like to, um, but I do have a few, a few shares and yeah, he's been definitely found money relative to cost going oh. in and where he's at now. The other thing too, is it's not um, at least not expected to be more than just a multi-week injury, right? Talking about probably returning, Roughly in week 10. We'll see if he ends up going IR or not. But, um, yeah, I mean, it happens. Um, but to your point, like the um, Amari thing and Zach Evans, just I, I would say be very, very cautious about actually starting Zach Evans this week. Um, yeah. I would not – I probably wouldn't do that unless you are completely gutted, like you don't really have any other type of options at all. Yeah, because I think it's just a, a long shot that he even produces get you over ten points. I think it's I think that's kind of a long shot unless he breaks off a big run. That'd be the only way I could see him getting to ten plus fantasy points this week. Yeah, like if I do not have any type of other options, which in lineup you should like you should have s- something because you probably backfilled enough. But if you don't right. and you wanted to do it, I would just much rather see the usage and then be confirmed that I'm wrong and then going into week eight uh okay let's go ahead and fire up zach evans if we want to but like right. I'd, i I want to see it before i actually put him in my lineup yeah exactly unless you're absolutely desperate or you're in a start 15 16 yeah eight. like i just gotta flex this dude because it's by apocalypse man there's all these teams right by, right yeah I, I have a couple of those leagues where i looked and i literally had like 17 players on by or something and i'm like oh boy yeah man like <clears throat> Uh, I, I'll pull up one of my lineups. I hate. Quick. I really hate to seeing the the buy apocalypse is really tough in some of these best ball leagues where you just happen to find a lot of exposure to certain teams. Like there's mm-hmm. one there's one best ball team I have that's it, it's good, but it's kind of in the middle of the pack. I'd say it's the fourth fifth best team in the league. So my record's right there on on the edge. And looking at this week, I had like eight players on buy, and it's a roster thirty. So I'm mm. I'm down to 24, but just just active players right this week, which right. is which is a lot. Yeah, I I can't find the league that I was looking at, but yeah, I looked at it earlier, and I'm like, oh my god, I literally have like 45 players on by. It's like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so what I wanted to kind of get into this week is get your uh, your take on a lot of these injuries that have happened so far. Um, to mm-hmm. everybody the last couple of weeks. Yep. Kind of what what are we doing with these players? Are we trading them? What are we trading them for? Mm-hmm. Um, I know we kind of went over some of these guys last week too with Christian, but a lot of the injuries uh, popped up again this week. Some of these guys are struggling a little bit too, so we can kind of get into it. So we'll start okay. with the quarterbacks first. Okay. So Justin Fields, he dislocated the thumb on his throwing hand. Probably not playing this week. I'm guessing he's probably going to miss two to three weeks. Um, yeah. They haven't put him on IR yet or anything. Uh, so Tyson Bagnett is going to be the starter here for a couple weeks. Uh, when he came in, it did not look pretty at all. But hopefully with some practice reps you know, throughout the week, he, he can get a little bit better. But I don't think it's going to be a significant upgrade. But what are you doing with Fields right now? Are you going to hold them? Are you looking to maybe see if you can offload them, anything like that? Um, so, I mean, I would love to, I think the reality with fields though, is if you have him right now and you haven't been able to offload him, like there, there was a, you know, couple up weeks there where the panic wasn't, I I should say the panic wasn't quite as, as high as it once was like to start the season. Right. Right. And the reality is now off this injury, like if you are going to have a harder time offloading him at this point. And given this injury, given that he's going to end up missing a couple more weeks at probably minimum, 
I mean, you're going to go bag. It, dude, this is, this is probably to the point where, not that the Bears were going to win a ton of games anyway, but right. it feels like that's, that, that, them getting outside of the top five in the, the pick race, honestly, is feeling very grim. And to me, it, it signals bad things for the future of Justin Fields. And obviously for this year, we're already missing time now. He hasn't been, he's been up and down as a player. The problem is, what are you going to get? Like, if everybody else sees that same road path, what are you? What are, what are we going to get in our leagues? I would love to sell, but I'm I'm going to guess more often than not I'm going to have to hold because, like, when you go to the quarterback table with Fields now currently with a thumb injury, and given that the Bears probably are going to end up looking to move on at the end of the year, at least people are going to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't even know. I don't even. I don't even know what that gets you back in a quarterback trade discussion at this point, man. Bad. All right. It's bad. So here's one scenario that popped up in my head right now, um, okay. and we can kind of get into this player too because it's the same. Um, so your opponent, you know, is not going to have Andy Richardson for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Would you be comfortable moving fields to get Anthony Richardson in some sort of package? Um, I mean, I don't know the particulars God, either yes. way, but okay. So you would be comfortable doing that. Yeah, I mean, it your would opponent, depend on... Your opponent's going to be missing Richardson the rest of the year regardless. They might be like willing to be like, okay, <laughs> I can part with Richardson and take Fields back. I'm only going to miss Fields for a couple weeks here. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I get, you know, I I don't have... I'll have a quarterback for the rest of the year once Fields comes back. So yeah. that's kind of one that popped into my head that maybe people could try. Yeah, so I think he, here's the scenario there, right? If you go, if you go that route, I, I'd be... I mean, if I'm not trying to contend right now, if I'm out of contention, I mean, I'm doing that in a fucking yeah. millisecond. Um, right. And frankly, I'd probably add, I'd probably add almost, a, uh, probably up to a first, frankly. If it, now, not mine, though. If I'm not contending, I'm not adding any early type of first. It's not happening. Right. Um, but j- that type of a value. Now, if you're contending, right, and you do this, you you might be hesitant because you'll get fields back in the, the back half of the year. And you're like, maybe he could just be a league winner for me this year. That hesitation. But I would say, um, if you're going to make this type of a move, go get, go get Anthony Richardson and then kind of have a contingency plan for this year for replacing that. You know, whether yeah. that's seeing, you know, who's the Minshew owner, who's, um, who's got Dobbs, like who, who has some type of other quarterback play that you can go get to mm. fill the, fill the void. But long term, man, that is a pivot that I think will it gives you a lot more outs. Like there's a lot more dynasty security for A Rich and his yeah. situation than there is Fields. Yeah. What what are your thoughts on Anthony Richardson too with his season ending shoulder surgery that he's gonna get um, I mean, he's it, gonna be out for the rest of the year? Yeah, it's not good. I I'll be honest, like it, that is it, it's not fun to see that. Um he, he Honestly, a lot of what, what was happening for him this year was what I was envisioning where you saw the lows and the passing woes at times you saw, but even then his legs were going to make his floor so great. But then when he put it all together a few times, you saw this crazy ceiling. Now, the one thing I am concerned about is this is, you know, the throwing shoulder. This is a lot more missed time now, right? This is already a guy that was kind of, um, I'm going to say he didn't have a lot of reps under his belt, right? Now he's going to miss more time. He's going to come back with an injury. There was already, like, accuracy concerns. So, like, long-term, this is obviously not a good thing. And it does worry me about, like, his future value. Like, or not not future value, but how his how he's going to be in the future as an NFL quarterback. But for Dynasty, I think his value is pretty secure, right? He's going to be the starter next year outside of a fucking Brock Purdy-type crazy situation happening, which – like Minshew's not going to be that unless they have Minshew get hurt and you know you think it's going to be Ellinger or something. I don't know. It's not. It's not happening, right? right. So t- to me, I think his value is a lot more secure long term, and at least for fantasy for another year or two in Indy, there's still you know sky's the limit with his rushing upside. But yeah, mm. long term, it definitely it definitely shakes things up a little bit though for him. Right. I mean, I, I just pulled up um, our friend Jeff Mueller. Uh, he's on Twitter at J-M-T-H-R-I-V-E-P-T. Um, he is a injury doctor, PT, obviously. 
Um, he's saying that Anthony Richardson's a good buy low for 2024. So if he, if Jeff feels comfortable that like this soldier um, injury, this AC joint sprain separation, whatever he has uh, to repair it, whatever it's going on, if he's not concerned about it, I don't see anything on his timeline that says uh, pump the brakes on Anthony Richardson or anything. I'll go ahead and buy some Anthony Richardson easily because I've I've seen yeah. enough so far this year personally to where I see the upside of him like I could see him being where Jalen Hurts is at like being able to run the ball I think his passing is a lot better than I thought it was going to be like I think like people were like oh man he he's like remember how people were always scared about Lamar's throwing like yeah. early on like they were like putting it like that proportions, but he's definitely not that. Like he's no. definitely he he has a lot better than that. Yeah, you're right. He he has some tools. Um, I, I think going back to Florida, he he didn't have like people want to always compare a lot of do a lot of comparative stuff to what we've seen lately from quarterbacks. And I guess that's it makes sense because it's what you have to go off of. But like his weapons were not very good. I mean, yeah, he definitely. I don't even think any of them are in the nfl they're, other they're than not justin and, shorter who hasn't done shit and you got the s and he's going against the sec basically every week right? right and you think about the talent level on the other side of the ball and you think about what he's dealing with and the one thing that always stuck out to me was before even the combine like this is a guy that's running away from all the sec guys right and mm-hmm. that athleticism then became ridiculous in the combine he proved it but you you saw in the combine, even throwing the football, like he has not, he has a cannon. He has put touch on the ball in certain spots in like drills. Now that was one thing that was kind of concerning was you saw a lot of these line drives. You didn't see a lot of the touch passes, but you saw that he did have, I think the ability to get there. Um, now whether that happens or not is to be seen, but to your point, I've already seen promising things out of him with his arm. than mm-hmm. some people probably were expecting. So I, I was in on Richardson and I'm even, I, I love everything I saw this year. Um, the, the the concern for me is basically how this uh, plays out for him in the long term. But to your point right now in the buy low, if you can afford to buy Anthony Richardson low right now, I think you do yourself a ton of favors in Superflex doing that, man. Yeah. And what's like your threshold of which quarterback that's like high up that you would be willing to sell? Like, Where's like the top echelon? Would it be? Would you trade Trevor Lawrence for Anthony Richardson plus right now? Plus, possibly. I would say th- that one to me. I'd probably hold off. Like if it, okay. it's going to be circumstantial though. If I'm com- competing, I'm going to just. Ho- I'd rather have Trevor Lawrence for the rest of the year. I know it hasn't right. looked great, and he hasn't actually okay. been giving you a ton of fantasy points. Um, but I still think he's elite enough. Now, if I was flush with quarterbacks, like let's say I had he's my quarterback one or two, but I have a very good third. I might, I might dabble in that. Like I might be willing to risk it a little bit there. Um, okay. So it would probably depend on my quarterback room there, but uh, if you, and also it depends on the plus really like, you know, if you give me a, right. if that plus coming back makes sense, I'd be willing to, I'm always willing to for the right price. Okay. Yeah. Cause that, that's kind of like the guy where I'm looking at. That's like in the elite tier where I'm like, okay, that, I think Richardson, fantasy wise, is going to be better than Trevor Lawrence in his career. I would agree. So I think that's kind of where I'm I'm looking at. Uh, obviously, I would do the Fields for Richardson one. I would rather have Richardson than Fields. Agreed. Uh, I'm just kind of <clears throat> I'm kind of out on Fields' inconsistency. Yeah, he can have some boom weeks, but those <clears throat> bad weeks are bad. What's your take um, on what about a guy like Lamar? I think I'd rather have <laughs> Lamar. Just okay. because the rest of the year, I don't think their stats are too far off from each other. I'm with you. I, I Well, I, um, I, w- I wanted to get your take on that, but I'm with you. I would stay Lamar uh, for sure. Another one, I I think you would have – if you had Kyler, I think you would have to give something on top of Kyler. For sure, but dude. But I, I, sure. would, um, I, I would I, do Kyler and something to get Richardson. Agreed. I would um, – shoot, I'd probably add I'd – add I'd add a late first, honestly. Yeah, I think I would too. Yep. Um, okay, so next quarterback I wanted to bring up here that's got the injury. So Ryan Tannehill, he had the uh, high ankle sprain, um, kind of like a similar injury to what he had last year and knocked him out for the rest of the year. That was like in week 15 or 16 last year. Um, 
so yeah, what are you doing with Tannehill? And then we don't know because they're on a bye this week. Who would be the starter? Would they just go with Malik Willis because uh, he's been the backup pretty much every week? Or do you think with this bye week they could install Will Levis as the starting quarterback? Well, it is in, the timing of it's very interesting because I think without the bye week, it's a hundred percent just going to be uh, oh, yeah. Willis because v- Vrabel just that that's how he operates. He'd rather keep things as mm-hmm. they've been. The bye week does bring in some inter- some interest to me on if he does switch to Levis. I I don't want to give Malik Willis a raw deal. Um, like he hasn't had a ton of reps, but frankly, the reps I've seen don't make me feel Inspire great about Malik you. Willis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think um, he has gotten better from last year. I'll give he, him that. He had, I, I would agree. Um, he has he well. I hope so. There, I remember the, the first game that w- I watched of Malik Willis, his completions, uh, there was five of them, and they were all inside the hashes. Right. And I was like, holy shit, that's ten times, million times worse than I thought. Um, so he has improved that. I, I would say I think there's, it still probably will be Willis um, for now. But I, I would say it's like a 70-30. Like I probably think 70%. Willis, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Levis. Um, yeah, I I mean, I think eventually we're going to see both no matter what. I would agree. So I'd prob- I'm probably with you on that where I would lean Levis or uh, Malik Willis for next week, and then if he shits the bed, then maybe they go to Levis. Um, I could see that kind of a scenario. I'm with you. Uh, so, yeah, what about, um, what, what about Tannehill, though? Are you just kind of – would you just sell him for anything at this point? Would you take like a – I mean, he is probably he wasn't. I would try to trade him for like um, a first and a fourteen team league, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago before the injury, and nobody would buy him for a first then. So, yeah. I would say he's worth a second. But now that he's injured and maybe missing a couple of weeks, is is somebody even going to give you a second now for Ryan Tannehill? Mm. And would you buy for a second, or would you maybe try and buy him for a third? Yeah, I think. I, here's what I'll say about that. Um, you know, the high ankle sprain, and he had, I don't know if it was tightrope surgery or what, he, he had he had a, um, he's going to avoid surgery maybe, so I don't know. But th- th- there's, I would say this, Vrabel is so old school, and it would not right. surprise me at all that unless Le- uh, Levis or, or Willis is like killing it, that we don't right. see him go right back to Tannehill um, because he just right. is trying to win now. And this this division uh, feels very, very much up for grabs, especially with the you know Richardson's injury and stuff. So, oh, my gosh. Mm. I, I think Tannehill probably is going to end up getting reps again as a starter. So if I can buy, like in best ball especially, if I can buy for a third, I think I would do it. Like in lineup, uh-huh. in lineup, man, I don't, even, I don't necessarily hate it, but in lineup, like I just – I don't have any interest in really even playing him when he comes back from the injury. So I don't even know if I'd really care to do that there, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he it is what it is. It's, it's Ryan Tannehill. He's probably not going to be back with the Titans next year. But I think he's definitely in the conversation to be somebody that could be um, picked up um, next year to be a starter, like a bridge starter. For I sure. Think. I mean, yeah, you, you just look at how desperate – there are for there are so many teams for quarterbacks and mm-hmm. Tannehill starting again next year for someone is going to feel super gross, but it's very likely to happen. I would agree. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is in the in the quarterback landscape. If you got a pulse, basically, you're you're gonna get picked up unless you're Carson Wentz. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, he, he they gave him a lot of tries too, man. You know, it just. It's just so back to Justin Fields real quick. Um, okay. Me and Scott talked about this yesterday. Is this the worst quarterback room in the history of the NFL? So you're going to have Tyson Bagenet, Nathan Peterman, and Trace McSorley for the Chicago Bears. Yuck. That honestly could be the worst trio <laughs> of quarterbacks I have ever seen in my life. I'll tell you um, a funny story, too, about this is – I had in a super flex league. I played Peterman. Um, mm-hmm. That game he started and threw five picks, I believe it was, in the first yeah. half. And yep. in this in this league, it was it's minus three for picks. So okay. 
I was, I believe he was at, and it's also minus one for sacks. He was at like minus 18 and they pulled him. I ended up winning this week, but it was like the craziest, the, I'm telling you, man, it was the craziest shit that you ever saw. Like me put him in there and then I'm like watching, like, there's no way, there's no way this is just insane. And, um, so anytime I hear that name, I always think about everyone probably thinks about that start as it is, but I actually had him in a lineup in a league. I'd like pay a lot of attention to And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me right now. <laughs> yeah, that was ugly. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, but anyway, yes, it's a, it's a real, that's a horrible quarterback room, dude. Yes. All right. Next guy up, Jimmy G. Uh, it's not like official that he's out this week or anything, but mm-hmm. was taken to the hospital for internal injuries. They checked on and everything. Seems like it was okay. I would assume he's missing this week and then he'll be back the following week would kind of be my guess. Yep. Um, so like I talked about earlier, I think Aiden O'Connell would be the starter this week. What about Jimmy G? Are, are you kind of comfortable just hanging on to him since it's only like a one week injury? And then yeah. um, would you be okay starting O'Connell this week against the bears on the road? Um, to the first question. Yes. I'm, I'm like Jimmy G to me is, <sighs> He's just a I'm not a I'm not too. a fan. I've not been a fan. I think yeah. he's I think he was a lot of overhype because of the San Francisco op- opportunity and situation. Um, but any of the shares that I have of him, dude, I have gone shopping with these Jimmy G shares. They they are not going to land you much back. And frankly, a lot of times you're better off just holding because nobody right. wants to pay anything for Jimmy G. So like I'm I'm holding uh, that for right now. Yeah. I think he'll get the job. Uh, he'll have the job back when he comes. Um, would you would buy him like if you're a contender? Give up your late second for him. In best ball leagues, I I, I play m- more best ball than lineup. So especially in best ball, like I hate to say this because it's it's so antithetical to my being. But yes, I would I would be shopping cheaply for a Jimmy G share. Um, a couple okay. thirds, maybe a, a second. I would have to like know my league and know that like I'm probably not going to get much yeah, better for this. Yeah, let's say you're. Let's say you're five and one, six and zero. Oh, you know your your second rounder is going to be like the two ten at ten. worst. Yeah, I think I think I'd probably do it. I'd just, I'd send it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then uh, o- O'Connell, you give a start in him this week against the Bears. Yeah. So I mean, I think um, the re- reality is like I I I would don't feel great about starting him, but it, 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 there's situations where I probably don't have anything better, and I I don't feel bad about it either. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I, I'd be fine starting O'Connell this week against the Bears. Um, I'd take him over a lot of these other options that are going to end up be playing. So, mm-hmm. uh, next guy up, uh, we already talked about Richardson, so I'm skip him. Deshaun Watson. So that's one to, near and dear to our hearts. Yeah, man. Uh, um, it sounds like the doctors and everything have cleared him. Uh, the Browns doctors, but like he's gotten like second opinions that it's kind of like something deep in his rotator cuff, I'm guessing is what it is. And so he, I think he personally is like, uh, I'm going to wait this out or whatever, uh, just off of his opinions. It's kind of like, I don't know if it's a pain tolerance issue or what. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, where, where are you at with this whole watching situation? And uh, just the PJ Walker, no thanks. I don't even care. He won a game last week. I'm not playing him. I mean, the interesting part, like PJ Walker, it really does. I don't really want to play him. However, like in pinch starts, I'd have to know what it was. But and I will tell myself this He'd story be that dead it was last on my quarterback right Would he be really? Yeah, wow. Yeah. You'd rather I mean, play? I know it. it's the Colts. I know it's the Colts and everything. I I think I'd rather play Badgett over. I was just going to ask. Ba- you're playing. And I'll probably Bajnett? eat it, wow. but but I'd probably have Badgett like one spot higher than him. The only thing I will give. PJ Walker credit for is Frisco's defense is not like you know some some slouch defense uh, it's a tough right. it's a tough ass first start for the kid but um to your point like he's even if it was a cupcake defense I'm not I'm not he's not high up on my list let me put it that way yeah um now I'm, so I'm with you there the um oh Watson thing so with what very very odd I'll say that this is this whole yeah. thing is very very odd and I don't know. It, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Uh, no pun intended here. But, <laughs> like, I mean, 
I just I'm kind of worried about like th- th- this guy's gotten a guaranteed, fully guaranteed contract, and if there's bumps and bruises and nicks along the way, like this guy's just going to maybe milk it a little bit as far as like not getting himself out there too much, which mm-hmm. is odd because you already have your contract guaranteed. But um, I don't know. It's it, it's an odd situation when you're telling your teammates like I'm going to play and they're expecting you to play, and then the next the following day you're not playing and then the following week you're not playing and now there's like uncertainty on when the hell you're going to be playing at all so all it's right. a i don't know as a browns fan i'm i'm rubbed the wrong way but uh, it, i don't know it, it, there's there's no clarity like to to your yeah. what you're saying is i think what everybody's kind of reading Thank between you. the lines and yep. gathering but nobody has any fucking clarity on this thing that's what that's yeah. what's the most most concerning would you be willing to go out and buy some Watson? Like, yes. I don't. I don't think buying. I don't think a single first is gonna get him. But you might have to give like a first and a second to get him. Would you be willing to just buy for a? I would do a two? first and a second. That'd be my top, though, frankly. And I think right, there might right. be. I think there might be people that are panicking enough to sell them to you for a first. Really. Okay. And then you know, kind of just finishing off your point though too with um, with Watson, I, I I'd be comfortable doing that, and then. I want to get your take too on um, DTR. Okay. Are you just dro- dropping him in like every league? Because if they're going to put PJ Walker out there over him, who they just signed off the practice squad not that long ago, um, do you think DTR is just kind of done or would you just hold him still? So, I mean, d- I'll put it like this. The, the DTR thing to me was always, as well as he played in the preseason, this was always a um, a plan for them to have a – essentially, it's kind of odd, but they wanted to mold him to be the discount version, the backup of Watson and be right. – look like that. But it, it, everybody knew, including them, I think personally, that he wasn't really ready to be that right now, right? This was yeah. a grooming thing. And – I. <laughs> They they make that trade of way of Dobbs because you're getting back you know draft capital and analytics tells you to do it and they're if you don't know everything in Cleveland is done by analytics in that front office by everything right. so they make that move but I don't think they actually intended and thought that they would have to use DTR this year and when that situation arose and it was just a spot start in one week you're thinking all right well we we, ha- we have to put him out there but then when it became something that could evolve into more time missed they realized like this team is. They think this team is ready to win right now, and they don't believe that he is ready to be the quarterback right now. So to get back to your question, I wanted to get all that out to say this. For me, DTR has always been at most a a stash in a lineup league where I just have spots to fill in taxi or whatever. Uh-huh. And, like, frankly, the only um, – value he has is to a Watson injury and it wasn't probably even for this season so Mm -hmm. I I, am I gonna just outright drop him off of like a taxi situation no like in best ball if I had him which I shouldn't have you shouldn't have yes you should be dropping him immediately in best ball in lineup leagues if you could afford to keep him in the taxi squad and you have him there and you want to wait it out that's fine but I think like expectations for DTR um, needed to really be put in check um, pretty heavily, and this, I think, was a wake-up call. Okay. Um, last one here on the quarterbacks, Daniel Jones. So, sounds like he hurt his neck, um, obviously missed last week. Tyrod came in. I'm guessing he's going to miss this week too, but it's not, like, confirmed or anything. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on Daniel Jones? Because I don't know if, if somebody offered you uh, or you uh, – we're giving up a 112 for Daniel Jones. Is that other owner going to, um, you know, decline it just because they don't want to give up a first for Daniel Jones or what, whatever? Yeah, I mean, I think I don't think people right now really want to pay a first for dimes. Um, right. The only thing to keep in mind is that, like, I don't I don't know when I'd have to actually look. You you might know off the top of your head. I don't know when the Giants can actually get out of this contract. Um, but it's not any time fucking soon. I yeah, I mean, I would think it's at least another year before maybe they could get out of it. I mean, uh, I'm gonna I I'm gonna pull it up right now. And he just signed that this off season because right. it was because uh, it was between him and Barkley for the franchise tag, and they ended up getting the Jones deal done this off season. So. Yeah, they got it done, and 
then that was I would think I think it was almost even more um, salt in the wound for Barkley, and then you know the we all know that. So yeah, the potential out is twenty twenty five. So there, he's playing the rest of this year. He's playing the next the rest of next year, and then even if they wanted to get out into twenty twenty five, he's twenty three million dollar dead cap hit. So just yeah. just think about like as awful as he's been, as bad as this is. Like this quarterback is probably going to have this starting job for the rest of the year and all of next year, almost guaranteed, and very well could go past that because it's financially very disruptive to New York. So, like for the for a one twelve type thing, as much as like I, I everyone wants to spend their first and go get assets that are sexier or more mean, like I would be in the market of sending one of these late first for Danny Dimes, frankly, in best ball leagues, man. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then Tyrod, he's pretty cheap to pick up or yeah. acquire. So if, even if you did do that, you could probably pick up Tyrod, do pretty cheap. <clears throat> I would totally um, agree there. And then the last two quarterback injuries, I think they're going to play this week, so they're not really major to talk about, but I'll bring them up either way. Uh, Trevor Lawrence with a slight knee sprain. I thought he was pretty f- for sure going to miss this week, but it sounds like even the backer, backup quarterback, C.J. Beathard's like, nah, Trevor Lawrence is going to play this week. So yeah, sounds Lawrence like should go. be good. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the other one was Baker Mayfield, who uh, hurt his left hand. Uh, the videos looked a lot worse. Um, him walking off the field looked like it was like his shoulder or arm. He was like barely moving it, but it just sounds like it was his left hand. I think Baker will be fine this week. I actually kind of like Baker this week against Atlanta. Yeah, I, I, I do too. Um, and I, I'm, with I I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you on all those points. Yep. I'm with oh, you on all okay. those points. All right. Um, all right. Let's kick it over to the running backs now. So first one, we'll start off as the the Christian McCaffrey news. Uh, Hurt is oblique. They haven't. They're playing Monday night, so you're not going to get any practice stuff until Thursday yep. for them. Um, obviously, Friday and Saturday will be the the two main ones that you have to look out for. Uh, but yeah, McCaffrey right now. I just I don't know what to think. I'm just kind of like saying, okay, maybe he misses one week and then he'll be fine, but. I don't think anybody's trading him. I don't think there's any panic there yet. So, uh, anything on CMC? No, I mean, if you have him, um, I, I would say this I, before you even get to it. CMC this year. Like, obviously, we love seeing any running back get that type of volume and then thriving in it. Like, in an offense that's been as good as Frisco's is, is getting that type of work. You're like, all right, CMC's back. The only thing that I with CMC, it's just it, – I think at this point you just have to understand it and ride it out, and it is what it is. But, like, this is a guy that has had a tremendous injury-riddled career, right? He's been yeah. extremely good. But the problem has never been what he's doing when he's playing. It's always been is he playing. And yeah. the guy getting this much work and banged up in week seven, like right before week seven, banged up week six – that, that's the that's the concern for me, man. This type of usage, and I just hope because here, here's the reality with CMC, right? He can be a, a complete driver even during all this to get you to the t- to the playoffs. Mm. But like teams that are reliant on him are gonna need him in the playoffs, and I just I'm I'm very I'm hoping that he will be available for us in the playoffs. That's the that's the thing with him. I think at this point w- with the injury right now. There's not much you can do with it. You hold it. You know, it's one week injury, hopefully, um, and you hope that he can stay healthy later in the year. But there's there's not really much you can do at this point. Yeah, I know. In a couple of redraft leagues this week, I I picked up Jordan Mason. I think he. It's a good would pickup. St- <clears throat> yeah, I think he would be the starter if. Um, McCaffrey does miss this week. Obviously, Elijah Mitchell's there too, but that guy's always hurt as well. That guy's mm-hmm. a walking injury. Yeah, and, he is. Um, he didn't do very good last week um, in his limited carries coming back off the injury, but Mason has had two good weeks in a row. He came in uh, to help finish it off last week against the Browns. He did get a touchdown. And then the week before, he played like the whole fourth quarter, and he scored another touchdown and was really good in that game too. So yeah. I think Jordan Mason would be the guy to own right now um as the the backup i think elijah mitchell yeah he's got he's talented but like he's he can never stay healthy and then Tyrion davis price i've pretty much have dropped him in all my leagues uh, yeah i'm over the tdp be, thing pretty much yeah i think he would be active but i just haven't seen a damn thing from him so. <clears throat> the, the only thing though actually is, is, I, I should that's kind of tongue-in-cheek though because the reality is like with 
the CMC injury happening and everything I was prefaced before, like there's not much you can do about him and his situation. But to your point here, this is the more actionable discussion is like you should be probably getting as many pieces in, in these lineup leagues that you have spots in. Man, you want every piece of the San Francisco running back room because this offense and this running situation is so good that it is plug and play for these guys as far as mm-hmm. for, as far as we care about in fantasy. I mean, you look at the Miami situation, and that, that's born out of the same running scheme, and you look at the Frisco situation over the years. Name me, there are – it's littered with running backs over the years that have given you very, very good weeks. Jeff Wilson uh, in both situations – is the name that comes to mind most in both situations like you Uh, you can go and look at both of them and say man just if there's a guy that's guaranteed like featured and projected to be the one that's getting you know the bulk of the touches or half of the touches like that's a guy you want to put in your fucking lineup yeah matt matt brito was killing it there for the 49ers when he was there uh elijah mitchell and elijah mitchell has has yeah exactly yeah so um, yeah, if you're a, a Christian McCaffrey owner, I would advise you to go and get Jordan Mason. Give up a third for Jordan Mason right now. If you have to give up a third and another, you know, running back that's kind of in the same mold as that, I'd be willing to do it. Like if I have to give up um, a third and Rico Dowdle to go get get him, I'll yeah, go ahead and do it. I would so. agree, and I think, and I, I think if if you're a CMC owner, you should do that. And I also would just, I would tell everybody else too, like. Even if you don't own CMC, like I'm acquiring Jordan Mason on yeah. the cheap if I can for sure too. Yeah, especially if your opponent to, or uh, one of your main rivals in the league has McCaffrey, that's a good uh, good way to do that for sure. For sure, brother. Uh, next one up is from last week, Devin a chain. Yeah, oh. where are you? That sucked because I traded for him in the league. You know, and then, me too. Yeah, you know, and ugh, it sucks. Uh, he'll be missing for four weeks, but yeah, what are you what are you doing with him, man? I think with him too. Uh, he go, he's on my IR uh, in best ball. He's one of the guys I know I have to hold, and it sucks having zeros, but like he's too good to not like. He's he's just a hold. He's just a waited out, and it's yeah. unfortunate. But and, you're starting to have these pile up. You got him and Kyron, and you know. Yeah, I don't think there's even a discount price on a chain either. <laughs> nah, I mean, I, there 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 isn't that I've seen. Now, give give it a, a couple more weeks, and Mostert's going crazy. And maybe Jeff Wilson's having some some good run, and maybe it, the price comes down a little bit. But I highly doubt it, man. This guy's been so explosive. Yeah, I think I think it's it's a first minimum. I bought him for a first and a second in a um, in a lineup league, and uh, the first is is not mine, and it's a it's a true middle team. So like. I'm hoping, and I think the team probably sneaks in the playoffs, but it could be one of these situations where it doesn't, and now you're talking like 105, you know, 105 in a second. It's like, that's hefty, right? So I got triple fucked on this one. I, oh, no. I traded for Devin. I gave up Jordan Addison and a third. <clears throat> I get, I have Justin Jefferson on that team. So I got screwed on A-Chain. I got screwed on Justin Jefferson, and I traded Addison, who now takes over for Jefferson. So I got triple fucked on that one. Dang. That <laughs> is bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would love to buy a chain. Like, if I'm like a 111, 112 locked in, and I'll offer it for, for that guy for sure. Straight up? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, even if, like you said, if even if I have to, like, give up um, – another just piece on Like, if I have to give up a Jalen Warren or a Samaj P. Ryan or – Jaleel McLaughlin, whoever to along with it, I would do it um, personally. Yeah, for sure, so, I, th- okay. I think I think I think he's a hold where I have him. I think if yeah. I can buy and afford to, I'm in. Uh, I'm in. David Montgomery mm. sounds like I. I th- it's a rib cartilage issue, so I'm got. He's definitely missing this week. They said second next week is probably iffy. I think the third week he should be fine. Uh, but it's, I think rib cartilage injuries are more just a pain tolerance issue. I think from what I remember in the past, that's what I was uh, actually going to say too. Okay. It's a it's a pain tolerance thing typically, and um, I mean I I think the severe I don't actually know this. I could be talking completely out of my ass here, but I think the severity of it can differ too. So, um, I don't know. Oh, for for his sake and for I mean I I have 
I don't have a lot of Montgomery shares. I have a decent amount though. For those shares, I'm I'm hoping he gets back sooner than later. But the one thing I will say about this injury is that if it it's at least one week, um, we already saw one week without him, and if it becomes more like I am excited and nervous, uh, nervously excited about like Gibbs because I think this opportunity could be like Gibbs really starting to maybe take a lot more of the work. The problem is he's going to have to show the elite yeah. upside that we've all seen and also be able to take the brunt of the, the work because Montgomery's been tremendous this year, man. Like Monty oh, yeah. has been an absolute workhorse. So Gibbs is going to have to shine while he's out in order to like solidify some of this, this role that Montgomery's completely taken from him. So the week that Monty did miss was against Atlanta <clears throat> and Gibbs started. He had 17 carries for 80 yards, one catch for two yards, and only was targeted twice in the passing game. Yep. So his other weeks before that, he had nine targets, and then uh, week four he had five targets, and then week five he missed. Yep. Uh, so it looks like if he is the starter, maybe he's just running the ball and he's not going to get as many targets as he ain't going to get those nine passing targets either. They're going to kind of spread it around the Craig Reynolds and uh, Divino Zigbo maybe. I mean, not the greatest options in the world, but um, yeah, I'm excited for Gibbs. And then if you're, um, you know, for David Montgomery, are you willing to go out and buy him? <clears throat> is, is he worth a, a standalone first if you're a contender, 111, 112 for Montgomery? Oh, I don't think it's I not would. not how I love to spend my first. I, I don't think but... I would do the first personally. Now, I'm not going to say that that's correct process because he's been very, very good. Um, I don't think I would do it for the first. Now, if I can buy him, like if I could find a way to get him with um, either other, you know, a second and another running back, or if I can find a way to get him that doesn't actually require, in particular, my first, I think I'd be I'd be on board. Um, but I, I think another a good way to maybe acquire him is if you trade one of these older running backs who we know are probably going to be done here within the next couple of years. In either the end of this year or next year, maybe like an Aaron Jones type. Eckler? A, uh, may, eh, I think Eckler's too valuable. Too high? Okay. Um, yeah, I think maybe Kamara or Aaron Jones is kind of what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, they're still producing, but it's not like the elite level they were. And they're probably a year or two away <laughs> from hitting the cliff. Um, I could see maybe offering one of those guys straight up for Montgomery. I think I'd be okay with that. I, I, don't I would think agree. I'm gonna lose I don't think I'm gonna lose too much for a week or two with Jones and Camara. And then when Montgomery comes back, I think I win the trade. But for a couple weeks, I think I'd be willing to maybe try that. See if you can if you have a Camara or an Aaron Jones, go to that owner and see, hey, can I get Montgomery off of you? I'll give you Jones or Camara. I would uh I would agree with that straight up. Now the Eckler thing when I brought it up, that was in mind of like I might be able to get Montgomery and something back, right? I, okay. If, if I can get a plus with it, because I'm I'm with you. Eckler straight up for Monty, I'm not doing no ch no chance. But right. like what I'm thinking is maybe because Eckler's still probably going to be very good. He, he was he was not he didn't look like himself last game. Um, however, I think better days are ahead for him. But if I can trade away Eckler and get let's say Montgomery in a second or something. Like now, all of a sudden, I have that extra second where I might be able to go buy another running back later. So True. it might yeah, be that's a good try. It, it, it that would be if if like Eckler is someone you're concerned about long term, maybe just something to think about there. But okay. um, yeah, I, I like the straight up Kamara and the Jones too. Okay. Um, Kyron Williams is the next one. Sprained ankle. Sounds like it's definitely multiple games. <clears throat> might miss until their week ten bye, and then come back for week eleven. Uh, so where are you at with Kyron, man? Um, I mean, he's a hold. He's yeah, dude. He he he's been so good. Um, I just hope that you know, hey, do what you got to do. It it does. It's not a high ankle. Um, you know, ice bath. Get they, they the training's gonna have him legit. Uh, so get the swelling out, man. Get get healthy. Come back, and I think the I think the show's his when he returns. So. Um, yeah. as far as the, the, the one thing is on the opposite end, right? Like we have Gibbs and, uh, Detroit, you have, we talk about the 49ers, you, you got, you want to pick up Mason, you want to get even other guys just yeah. is in waiting. 
man, it, I don't even know what the hell to make of this offensive uh, run game right now. And frankly, like I, you pick up whoever, but I'm not expecting anything. Uh, I, I don't want to see something from somebody before I put them in my lineup, as we talked about with Evans. Yeah, I mean, if I have to choose somebody of these new guys that they just brought in, it's going to be Miles Gaskin for me just because I've seen it before, and I know he's a good player. I mean, he hasn't gotten a chance the last couple years, but I would choose him over Royce Freeman, Daryl Henderson, who just got picked up off the streets, um, hasn't really been with the team all year. And then I think the reason that they brought all these guys in is because they know Zach Evans can't do it. So if I have to choose one, it's Miles Gaskin. You could probably get him off of your waiver wire if your waivers haven't run yet. Yeah, Gaskin, um, I would agree. It's interesting, man. You know, McVay has this thing where he, you know, like uh, Malcolm Brown, he he has these guys he just likes and trusts, and he's mm-hmm. like, all right, that, that. like part of me wonders because seriously, as a guy that's loved Acres for for a while and been disappointed, obviously. Last year, Henderson was getting the run ahead of Acres and putting. Like, imagine you end up just cutting this guy outright, okay? So, so this guy is you're getting your primary usage. You cut him outright. Nobody picks him up. Nobody picks him up for the whole rest of the year, weeks and well, weeks and weeks. Well, Jacksonville picked him up. But they t- they didn't do anything they with cut him. They, they yeah, cut, cut him cut immediately, him. right? They gave him they, – they saw him they, – they brought him in to see they that he sucked. They gave him like a month, yeah. Yeah, they brought him in to see that he sucked. They sent him back home. And then he's sitting on the couch for the rest of the year. And then all off season sitting on the couch. I mean, the Browns brought him in. People looked at him, and nobody sitting week six, and they're like, you know what? Let's bring him in because there's familiarity there. Like, yeah. I I wonder if there is. It, he just is familiar, but this guy's just not that good. But McVeigh has found a way to use him, so I wouldn't be surprised yeah. to see him get enough usage here. Yeah, in, in my deeper deeper leagues, I would definitely take a shot and see what happens. You'll find out real quick too. So. It's gross as hell, man. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see him get more run than we would all probably like. But and yeah, then, I mean, I don't know, Kyron. Kyron, I'm holding the rest of these guys. Uh, I feel kind of like are kind of feel like plotters and Zach Evans. I I would be intrigued by Zach Evans. I just I just need to see it first. Okay, and if you were to trade Kyron. Okay. I think beforehand, I don't think he was worth a first. I don't think a one twelve. I don't think I was selling that to get him. I think a second and maybe a back, another person back was what the price was. Okay. Would you sell him now for just for any second? Nah. No. Okay. I wouldn't sell for any second. Um, I'll tell you the truth, man. I think I'd buy for a second. Yeah, I can see it too. Yeah, I think I'd buy for a second just because. I just think his price was already there. Yeah, I'm with you. But so, I'm saying if I can, if if there's an in, if there's an injury discount, and someone's worried they're going to miss three, four weeks out of this guy, and, I, and a second can get it done, or even a second and a third, frankly, I would do it because especially here, if you're a contender, right? Yeah, because the one thing is right when I go to spend those type picks, I have them basically stored up, knowing that I want to spend it on spot starts or future running back stuff. What's nice is Kyron is hurt right now, right? So you're not going to get any run from him for the next three weeks, but it's almost like I'm spending my spot start in week 10 or whatever ahead of time, and I do know that he's going to come back and get that that workload. So uh, I, I would I would buy Kyron, frankly, right now. And I think the buy window before this injury was totally shut. Because to your point, you were going to have to spend a first, if not more. And most people just were – they couldn't pallet that. I think now if you wanted to but you couldn't do that, now is the one time maybe you could sniff around and actually make something happen. Okay. Uh, these next two are kind of ones that people don't really love. So I'm wondering if we can buy them cheaper. And we'll start first with Miles Sanders. Mm. And he's on a bye week this week, too. So nobody's really using him. Um, is his price still a second? Or do you think you could offer a third and get Miles Sanders? Maybe a third and another, you know, another back. Can I give up a third and some AJP Ryan for Miles Sanders? Yeah, I think. I think a third in the back or multiple thirds. Mm-hmm. I don't. And I think I, I would buy for that personally. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm saying I would be trying to buy for that um, if I could. Um, I don't know that it gets done. Like I, I could see someone wanting a second just because it's Miles Sanders. There's a little bit of name cachet there. I, I'll just say this. He has not done like anything in here. So like I'm not sending a second personally for this. Um, yeah. 
and I think there's I, I, I like the talent there's they gave him enough of a bag so that I feel like they're gonna give him work but it has been a it has been a really really gross start to the beginning of his yeah. new tenure in uh in Carolina man I think that has a lot to do with the offense. Um, now Agreed. that they're changing, they're changing the play caller. Um, you know, rest of the season, Frank Reich has given up the play calling duties. So, yep. We'll see what happens there. Like I'm with you though. Like I'm not buying for a second, but I buy for a third, and, and if I can give up a running back, agree. Um, so I think that's something you can try. But yeah, I agree with you. I don't think I would give up, even if it's my two twelve. I don't think I would give it up for Miles Sanders right now. Yeah, I agreed. I'm with you. Um, okay, the other one I was going to mention was James Conner, kind of the same situation. Yeah, Conner's an interesting one. Um, now, the one thing, like, Conner is not, I mean, he, he just feels so old. Um, and so, mm -hmm. like, value retention is basically non-existent. But I, I don't really care. And the one thing that's different about him and Sanders is, like, this guy went, went healthy in Arizona just been given a ton of work now uh demarcado started taking him off the field for third downs which kind of lowered his ceilings a little bit but mm -hmm. uh i don't know man i think do we know when he's supposed to be back did they say he's supposed to come right back off the ir or do we do we um, not know i would assume so but it's not like official or anything yeah i mean he he's had his uh his share of injury stuff um I think I'd be interested in buying, honestly, if I knew the price was cheap enough. Um, what would you pay for him right now? I, yeah. I was going to say it's. I think it's probably similar to Sanders. Like I could maybe get behind trading. Like if I know I have a two ten, two eleven, two twelve. Yeah. I think it's... I'd be okay with it, but that's like the high side. Yeah, I was going to say that would probably be my top dollar. I would try to send. I would try to send like a couple of thirds or a third and another yeah. back or something like that if I could. Yeah. That would be the way I'd try to. The, I wouldn't even say the 212 or 210 is a is an offer I wouldn't do eventually. I just – I think I might actually refer to hold and almost, like, see if I could take that and attach something to that and go get something that's either playing right now or a little more long-term. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't really care about the long-term security of my running backs, but a little more uh, – value retention like if if james connor was to get hurt like if you buy that second round pick okay just to give you an idea of why i'm saying this if you buy for that second round pick let's say james connor comes back off higher but he gets hurt and is done for the year like bro james connor's value is completely fucking dead like yeah. you go you lose all that second round pick where i might prefer to see if i could find somebody that like miles sanders is still probably damn near dead however there's this he'll be back next year there's a contract there's there's you don't have this like going to be 29 year old guy that's been hurt all over and over and over again so yeah. um you might be able to get out a little better from somebody else uh, if there's an injury yeah. where james connor goes completely to the floor yeah connor could be like next year's fournette or kareem hunt who doesn't sign until week three or four <laughs> has, still remains unsigned i could see that exactly yep um, and then quickly on their backups, Chuba Hubbard for Miles Sanders. And then, you know, right now the Cardinals have Ingram and Damian Williams. And then I, I'm not really interested in Dean Mercado. Um, Damian Williams, I've picked up a lot for cheap. Uh, but Chuba Hubbard, he's kind of almost been like a flex worthy play almost, you know, half of the games at least this year. And he looked pretty decent last week against Miami. Yeah. Um, you know, are you interested in any of those guys or any, anything like that? Um, I would say like I've I've picked some of them up. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest though, like I'm not in the, in the trade market. Like I'm just not. I'm those good. are kind of throw in guys, right? Yeah. I'm. Oh. I, if if you throw them into a deal or something, maybe like like there's a deal I kind of like, and I'm like, yeah, maybe you just give me this guy too. What the hell? But mm -hmm. it's not. Th th these are not targets for me in any capacity. I'm kind of like I'm good now. If I have them or picked them up, I'll see what I can do with them, but. I'm not really looking to buy or acquire. Okay. And then two more running backs real quick. Uh, Khalil Herbert, he got hurt uh, two weeks ago or whatever now. Yep. It sounds like um, <clears throat> if Roshan can get cleared from concussion protocol, I would hope that he is the starter, not like guaranteed or anything. I think Foreman would probably still get a couple carries, but I think Roshan would eventually yeah. take over that job. This, um, this but is yeah, my, with, yeah. Would you – do anything with Herbert, hold on to him, trade him. 
I, I don't think, think you can get a second for him. I think you'd have to get like a third and maybe a running back back. Yeah. So see, I think at least the way I'm viewing it and the way I think about it, I I think this is this is the time that Roshan has the ability to take the job now, and I think that he will. Um, Herbert did br- actually pretty damn well though uh, beforehand, mm-hmm. and. Roshan, if, if Roshan doesn't do well or doesn't end up taking this job away, Khalil Herbert could come back and get it. Um, but I'm projecting Roshan to take the job away and kind of run with it. So for me, um, I don't have a lot of Herbert shares, but the ones I do, like I think depending on what I could get, I, I would almost be comfortable with that third and a different back back as long as, you know, it was a back that I – Felt like I could put in in like if I could get McLaughlin in the third, I'd do it. Okay. Um, and then the last one that's coming back from injury this week is Jeff Wilson. Um, yeah, should be back this week. He, probably not like a guy I'm looking to go buy, but um, would you buy for a third? Yeah, I, okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this: <clears throat> the same thing I said about the San Francisco offense yeah. is true, and honestly. The, um, the, the the offense is extremely explosive in Miami. Now, the one thing about Jeff Wilson versus Mostert and versus A-Chain is you got to remember the, the outrageous long runs are not going to come from Jeff Wilson very likely. Jeff Wilson is not taking one of these, you know, five, ten-yard runs and getting to the outside and beating people to the edge and getting 60-yard house calls. So – there isn't probably this crazy upside of the Mostert or the A-Chain, but this offense, man, is so freaking good that I want pieces of it. So, yeah, I will take Absolutely. I will take Jeff Wilson for a third. And, listen, Mostert's been hurt before. A-Chain's on, on the shelf. It would not shock me at all if Jeff Wilson ends up somehow getting, you know, weeks where he's the, the lion's share of the work. So, for a third-round pick, I'm in. Okay. All right, on to wide receivers here. So the main one starting off here, Justin Jefferson out for four weeks, hamstring injury. I mean, I've seen some trades for him. Uh, I've seen some crazy, ridiculous trades for him. I mean, I'm still holding them personally. I think the price to buy them is probably still astronomical. What, what, what are your thoughts here on Jefferson? I um I think if you are a contender, you owe it to yourself to see if you can get out and get a elite receiver back. When I'm talking like top ten, top twelve, and maybe even a plus, right? And that's what I've seen get done because you can still stay in contention and help your team probably have a chance, a better chance to win. Um, I think you owe it to yourself to do that. Now, I'm not do, don't take a light offer on Justin Jefferson. This is still fucking Justin Jefferson, who's almost untouchable across leagues when he's healthy. Um, so that that would be on the one side. On the other side, if I'm in a position to buy Justin Jefferson, like that probably means I'm not contending right now. Like, understand you're going to have to sell some serious assets. So if I'm contending. Unless I can find someone that's just really itching to get off of him and sells him way too cheap, I, I better be a team that's not really poised for this year to win. And in that case, man, I'm seeing what it takes to get Justin Jefferson. Like, if I'm not contending right now or if I don't feel great about my chances of winning this year, d- d- this is your time to buy Justin Jefferson. They never come around. They never come around. I think you do it. Okay. I like – I like your call on that too. I think the one underlying fact that nobody's talking about is he's probably not going to have Kirk Cousins next year. Correct. We don't know who the Vikings quarterback is going to be next year. Are they going to be bad enough to get Caleb Williams, Drake May, Michael Penix, whoever's up there, is number quarterback three, Shadur Sanders, whoever? Are they going to be that um, that bad? I don't know. So. Yeah. With you. Um, yeah, we'll see on that one. Um, let's see. The next one I want to bring up, uh, Debo Samuel. What are you doing with Debo? I think he's a hold now. I personally have been trying to sell a lot of my Debo. Um, and he's, he's, he's actually proven some spike ability still. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of miles to feed in this offense, and I think he still goes for enough of a haul that I'd like to trade out of him. I think at this point, though, he's probably a hold because with injuries and, 
I don't know. You pro- I feel like you're going to get low ball offers right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably you probably get it. a second and a player is probably what you get. Yeah, and I'm just for that. I'd rather have Debo Samuel. Right. Okay. All right. We'll blow through these last couple ones here real quick. They're not really that important, but um, Zay Jones. Eh. <laughs> You know, yeah. it is what it is. Yep. Juju. I brought Juju up just because he's been so goddamn disappointing this year. Man, I've been I've trying to tell people, people, man. I've been trying to tell people. I've seen man. people just drop him, like, especially in, like, um, redraft leagues. He's on the waiver wires. Everywhere. Dude, in redraft, listen, in redraft, he has to be on the waiver wire. If he's not on the waiver wire in redraft for you yet, you're just yeah, tripping. you're just wasting a spot, yeah. Um, um, it, uh, dude, this is – um. This is rough, man. This is rough. Uh, I mean, I talked like, a lot I of shit. I think you could easily buy him for a third in a in a dynasty league. And I, can I tell you the truth? I'm not doing that. Uh, okay. And I'll tell you. I mean, the crazy part is, but he he's 26. I know we're gonna say he's not that old, but man, like understand this offense has Kendrick Bourne, low key thriving. When I say low key, very low key, but like he's destroying. For example, he had 10 catches for 89 last game, Eric. Okay? The entire season, the whole season, Juju has 86 yards. Yep. Bro, I'm, I am out. I am completely, completely out. out on Juju. Okay. Sell. All right. I'd sell for a third, frankly. And I know that's not, that sounds crazy, but I would sell for a third, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you have him spammed your league for any third and see, see what happens. I actually uh, like that, then- yep. Okay. And then the last receiver I want to talk about, he's he's been injured the last couple of weeks. Um, Traylon Burks. Is he just a bust? It's starting to feel I'm not gonna say Rager like, but Rager light like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I still think there's talent there. I still think that it's not I th- I think the situation is not the greatest, and I think there's ba- maybe better days ahead. But in the in the same breath, man, when you go back and look historically at guys that produce like this after two years, it's just it's just an outlier bet at that point. And I don't really like to make a lot of those anymore in Dynasty. Yeah. I mean, I know Scott Connor talked about this last year. He was completely out on Jahan Dotson and that was like halfway through the year, towards the end of the year. He was like, I don't I don't think he's any good. And look at this year, Jahan Dotson hasn't done a goddamn thing. The crazy part is Jahan Dotson had some actual resurgence in the offseason right. value wise to get out and like that was wild cuz he's done yeah. nothing. And Traylon is kind of in the same boat where he just ha- he hasn't done anything in 2 years. Yeah, I know the injuries a little bit this year. Uh got injured last year as well. Yep. But you know, usually <clears throat> it's like on these wide receivers it's one or two years and then if you ain't doing anything you're we're we're out. Yeah, <laughs> Scott Sky Moore is teetering on this. Well, yep. he probably is already on this. Traylon yep. Burks, John Dotson. So, yeah, I mean, it sucks, but those guys aren't worth the first. Yep. You can maybe get a second and a player back at at the max. I'm with you. you. Might have to just settle for a second on some of these guys. So I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with that. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, there hasn't really been too many tight end injuries, so we're going to skip over the tight ends. But, um, yeah, that's it for this one. Let's uh, play America's Favorite Game. and then Let's uh, do it, man. I, I've been waiting to play America's Favorite Game. It's one of my, one of my favorite I, games And I play. didn't have a topic until just three seconds ago. <laughs> for real? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Let's go. What do we got, I didn't man? really have anything. I didn't think of anything this week. But since we were just talking about draft busts, who was your favorite player that ended up turning into a draft bust? Like somebody that you either really liked or you thought, oh, man, this guy's going to be a multi-time pro bowler, going to be a stud. Ooh. And something like that. So your favorite. Yeah. I have a couple in my mind if you want me to go first. Yeah, go ahead. I'm I'm actually – well, I'm thinking, um, but I, I got like – five right now i'm trying to narrow it down. yeah go ahead, i got go. I, yeah i got a couple as well so uh, my first main bust that i just liked as a player and i thought he was going to be good but obviously it didn't turn out was johnny manzel <clears throat> mm-hmm. being a browns fan i'm sure you were the same with me johnny mania we loved it yep uh, if you watch the documentary you know why he was um just just shit <laughs> the nfl <laughs> yeah, just man. Didn't, he, he, he did not give one fuck yeah, um, exactly he was one one that I will admit that I thought was going to be like a Hall of Famer 
Uh, do you remember Glenn Dorsey for the? He played for LSU and then yeah. defensive lineman and went to the Chiefs. He yeah, did absolutely fuck all in the NFL. I don't even yeah. remember one play he ever did anything. But I thought that dude was an absolute stud and was going to be a um, a Hall of Fame type player, and he did absolutely nothing. Um, I would say too another one. He's probably one of the biggest a bust in NFL history, but when you saw him play and the talent in his arm, you were like, holy shit, this guy's going to be the next Dante Culpepper, and that was Jamarcus Russell. Yeah, uh, that was that was one of my obvious ones right there, Russell. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like I think everybody just thought, oh, man, this guy's got so much talent just oozing out of him, that arm. He was just a lazy fuck who didn't care, you know, basically. That's 100% uh, so that, right. Yeah, so – and then another one that turned out turning a bust is, a, of course, another Browns player, Trent Richardson. Um, oh, yeah. He, he had a good good rookie year. It was fine. Then the Browns traded him off smartly and got a first-round pick back from him, but he was terrible in the NFL after that too. So yeah. uh, those are just a couple of mine. Of course, two Browns on there, awesome. You have to have uh, you have to have that, right? So Yeah, they've had Ru- enough. Russell was one that came to mind. Um, this one, I don't know if you remember. This is going back a little ways, but – like when I was in college, I remember watching a lot of Taylor Mays, the safety out of uh, USC, yep. and thinking he was going to be great, and he was not at all. Um, I and I would say um, Jamarcus Russell, him, and then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say as much as I wasn't sure, like I, th- I thought Nikhil Harry was going to be a lot better than he was, frankly. Um, yeah, that's a good one. That's and good one. it's a little more recent. Um he was my number one wide receiver in that class too, so I'm I fall on the sword with you there. Like to me, I w- I would say he I was uh, not putting him at the wide receiver one, but he was very close. Like I was, I told and and a lot of the strong push for his name and the fact that he was drafted highly. But man, I I didn't expect him to bust out like that at all. Yeah. Um, I thought he was a, a solid player, and um, I'll be honest, this one I didn't actually think was that solid of a player. But I just thought there would be more to be had with him, and Corey Coleman was an absolute. Because I got to throw a Brown in there. Yeah. Corey Coleman was a complete ass white man, just absolutely a turd. Yeah, he was terrible. I got three more real quick. Brady Quinn too for the Browns. I thought where we got him. Oh man, we got hit steal. I was so pissed because I, I I really followed that draft. That's a Jamarcus Russell, Joe Thomas, Calvin Johnson. Adrian Peterson, that yeah. was the guy I wanted. Was Adrian Peterson? I was oh, so man. like, give me Adrian. Obviously, we got Joe Thomas, and he became a Hall of Famer, bet one of the best left tackles ever. So I can't complain there. But then Brady Quinn started falling. We trade back up to get him. I'm like, oh, dude, we're set. We got Brady Quinn and Joe Thomas. It yep. just didn't work out. And then the other two are very um, prominent names that I thought were going to be superstars and weren't. Uh, Vince Young for uh, the Titans. Super solid player. He had a couple years there, but it wasn't like he took over the NFL kind of like an Anthony Richardson or Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts had did. Like he right. was like those guys before before then. And then the other guy in that same class that he went up against in the national championship game, Matt Liner. Oh, um, I thought Ma- I Leinert thought Matt Liner was, was yeah. like it was it was just a lot of you know, I didn't know back then what I know now, but it was just the weapons around him made him so much better than what he was. Yeah, um, for sure. I thought I thought he would be great. You know, I'm like, oh man, he's he was awesome, all this, and yeah, he he sucked. Too. He was terrible. Yeah, there's a whew. boy. I tell you what, I could play this. I could literally end up playing this game all day because, like, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you say it, and then you kind of just more names come to your mind. Um, God, man, and you know the Browns could be on this list for forever. Like, there's oh, just we could so we can name many. one every year, <laughs> every single year, man. I mean, like, literally in that same that that, that Johnny class, um, Justin Gilbert, yeah. Gilbert. And what's amazing about that specifically is the fact that you took in the first round what hindsight twenty twenty were not NFL players, right? Like, y- you can bust, okay? You you missed on bust, but like typically what that means is you just weren't that good. But, like, uh, Barkevius Mingo, right? Like, he ends up finding homes and plays in the NFL. Like, he has a career, right? Yeah. These dudes don't, uh, were not NFL players, and you took them in, in the same class in the first round. They, they were not yeah, NFL they even players. They their, their whole rookie year. Or their the whole NFL contract. said, the whole NFL said, these guys do not belong out here. Like, yeah. that's, that's almost impossible to do in the same draft. 
I went back and looked at that 2014 class. So that's the class of Odell, Mike Evans, all those guys. Yeah, Sammy Watkins. Um, yeah, Sammy Watkins. So we, I looked at that class. If you, I, th- I want to say it was 21 or 22 of those first round picks actually ended up being like pro bowlers or relevant players, and then the the le- other eight players or nine players, whatever it was, were the bust. And the Browns yeah, had two two of the two of them. Bust. Like really, like. Oh, just ugh. brutal. But anyways, that's a good one to end on there. Uh, appreciate you guys um, listening. Start sit shows every Sunday morning. Me, Adam, and Mike uh, live on the YouTube as well every Sunday morning, helping you guys to start sit. Um, you guys obviously have the 40 chess. You got the trade show. You got all the good stuff going on too. But anything yeah, else you want to plug before we get out of here? That's it, man. Check out the uh, if you're if you're either watching this or listening on the podcast. Check the other one out. You know, in your drive. If you if you normally do YouTube, you know, you're on your drive. You can't watch. Check out the podcast feed or vice versa. Um, you know. Check out, check us out, South Harmon FF. But outside of that, man, yeah, just keep plugging America's game, killing it, man. Yep, warp tool, mind warped on the South Harmon FF.com website too. Yeah, um, especially though that uh, warp tool, man, it'll help you out, especially Big with time. trades and stuff right now <laughs> and stuff. So it's a good time to go ahead, go purchase it, um, and use it for the rest of the season, man. Help help that team out. Yeah, the, the warp tool, uh, great great plug there. Yeah, uh, South Harmon yeah. FF.com forward slash warp uh go check it out man 690 a month so for the what remaining i mean for basically for 13 bucks uh i'm gonna I'm guess you take home more money than you would have so great investment man yeah i mean check it out for the you know a month you know play with it and with some trades and if you like it you can get it for the whole year so exactly uh, appreciate that so all right guys uh, until next week for episode 13 we'll see you have a good one peace